Hello Saints, I, I hope that you really enjoyed the, the nugget that we have for the day and hope you enjoy the, the, the Bible studies that we've been sending out and this is just another format I want to use it to kind of go straight to a point or a biblical principle that we can use in our everyday life uh, because we know that a lot of us got a lot of busy schedules so we want to give them something that they can hear real quick and move forward. So this is just background of, of the concept behind Christian Nugget. Uh, this is a follow-up from what you just heard of the nugget of a nugget, and I'm looking forward to sharing more nuggets with you in the future. But this will be added to the end of most of these videos, just to explain what is a Christian nugget uh, and, and the concept behind it. Amen. So one of the things that you want to look at is <sighs> where the Christian nugget come from. I use the scripture first starting off and. Uh, Matthew 16, 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of the living God. And I like that revelation itself. That we're not serving a, a dead God. or a, you know, Some people want to sit there and think that that's up to them. But I'm going to tell you right now, we're talking about the Creator. And if the Creator, I have to get one thing, if the Creator is not alive, then we need all we. But the bottom line is we serve a living God. We're not serving. That's why he said he didn't want us to do images and, uh, and, 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 uh, of him. Uh, because he's, he's a living God. Not, not some relic from the past. Amen. But he says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, Petro, Little Rock. And upon this rock, Petra, <laughs> I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Petra is Christ, the massive rock, the big rock, the foundation. Petro. Petro is, is, is a little rock, and, and, and it, 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 it kind of, to me, is like saying you as an individual is a piece of the rock, or a piece of the rock is now in you to make you more solid than you were before, so that you, you can use that as you walk your day-to-day -day walk. And then we, as we do our walk day-to-day, -day, we know we have to deal with all the challenges that comes with it. Amen? So... I want to share that what the what a nugget means a little bit more. Uh, nugget is a noun. Uh, the definition I have for for the nugget is a small lump of gold. I, I like that concept in itself. Nugget is a small lump of gold or other precious precious metal found ready form in the earth. <laughs> and that's why I want to talk about. We talk about we talk about the uh, a nugget. Coming at us is something that's found in us. Amen? Ready. Formed. A chunk or a lump of another substance. Now, I know you're talking now, right? Because the fact is that the, the Holy Spirit imparts His essence in us. And then and, and, and the revelation is what I call that nugget that has been applied into us. That the precious substance that is put into us. Christian nuggets are spiritual nuggets or seeds from the Word of God that our ministry will use to expound upon the Scriptures. The promise of God, or in some other way, insightful looks at God's Word. We want to cover principles found in the Bible and how those Scriptures apply in our everyday life. Amen? And that's the key to it. Is that life is very complex. And there's no one answer. There's one way. Jesus. That was in John 14, uh, 6 said, Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Amen? The vision of the ministry. It says, as we proclaim Jesus, the Christ, as the head of the church and the manifested word of God, our goal is to teach the Word of God distinctly so that it may be applied to our everyday lives in a practical and effective manner, thereby 
being transformed into world overcomers, changing our immediate world and all those with whom we come into contact by planting the incorruptible seed of Christ into people's hearts and believing God will give the increase. That's what it's all about. How these principles is what we want to do to apply in our life, our everyday life. Because that's where the conflicts are, right? That's where all the, the challenges are. The, the, the good and the bad. All that is part of life. And we need to be able to, to apply God's word on our everyday life. Our ministry model says, Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. The bottom line is that we, we to overcome, we need to share nuggets. We need to share revelation. We need to share understanding to us, to one another, to our children, uh, to people we come in contact with. It helps other people to to recognize and know that they're not the only ones dealing with challenges in life because we deal with them too, each of us. And. It's so easy sometimes for us to, to, to be caught off guard, to be drawn in the wrong direction, or, or just be hampered in going forward. Uh, that's, that's what the challenges occur in life, and that's why we got to really uh, stay focused. And, you know, like the one scripture the Bible says is watch and pray. Huh? Watch and pray, man. Pray, communicate with the Holy Spirit. Watch what's going on around you. Be attentive to the things that's happening in your life so you can respond appropriately. Amen? Now, this is something that I think is important. When I, when I gave you the uh, concept of saying, Peter, you know, thou... Uh, a, a little rock. I, I think it's important to insert into this for part of the background, the, the whole scripture leading to uh, that revelation being revealed to, to Peter. So let, let's look at the, the whole scriptures that, that lines up with that. And, and so we go back to Matthews and we look at chapter 16, uh, starting at verse 13. And it says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And I like that too. And I want to make sure we, when we go forward and read the scriptures, it got to become a personal understanding of you. You got to say, who is God? Who is Christ? Who is the Holy Spirit? Who am I? Because it doesn't matter too much about what other people say. Uh, who God is, who the Holy Spirit, who Christ is. It doesn't matter too much about how I say it. It's how you say it. How do you perceive your Savior? Huh? And it says here, in verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. As we get Revelation from the Holy Spirit. Revelation that God has revealed to us through His Son. We are given the ability in the spirit realm to, to bind those things that, that comes against us. Just like they are bound in heaven. To bind those things that, 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 that challenge our sanity, uh, our prosperity. And then 
to loose the things that we need loose on earth as it is in heaven. And that, that, that comes from, from many different things, from the spirit of the might or power that we need to, to stand. Or it, it, it comes to the, the blessing and prosperity to, to get favor in the things that we do in life. Amen. In Mark 4, chapter 4, as we deal with and give different nuggets, we're going to give different examples in our life. Some of them are going to be outright real world situations, and then some of them are going to be what to say the parable is. It's just a, a, a spiritual principle uh, telling in a story uh, of, of earthly truth. So, so this one... It is it's very important we get into the, this, this particular parable because bottom line is, Christ said, if you don't know, understand this parable, how can you understand any other parable? And I want to make sure that as we talk about the different nuggets that we'll be sharing on this video, we need to make sure, what, what, what is this parable? How does this parable apply? Amen? So let's look at this one. We're starting in uh, Mark chapter 4 and then looking at verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to them that are without, all things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? That's critical, saints, because he's trying to tell you something. We, we need to get to it. What's the mother of all parables? It's this right here. Sign in verse 14. Mark 4, verse 14. The sower sows the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. That's why he don't want it in your heart. Because when it gets in your heart, just like anything else gets in your heart, then you, it becomes part of you. What God wants is the word to be part of you. The Satan doesn't want the word to be part of you because if you have the word a part of you, you have the tools to deal with the challenges that you're facing. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, meaning their heart is hardened, who when they have heard the word, hey, immediately they receive it with gladness. Hey, the good news, the gospel, great. But it's going to be in my head. It's not going to really fall into my heart because my heart is too hard to receive it. But they like what they're hearing. And then in verse 17, and having no root in themselves, because it didn't plant, didn't make it through the hardness of the heart, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction, this is how the enemy brings affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended. And that means you get off track. You stop doing what you're doing because you became offended because of you trying to do right. Now, I'm not, many of you, I'm pretty sure, I bet you every last one of us has listened to this video. Every one of the people that go to church every Sunday and during the middle of the week, every one of us that received Christ have been challenged, have been afflicted, have been persecuted. And, and in some cases, we almost wanted to just lay aside our salvation and come into the flesh and become we, 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 we the process we off end the process so that we can go ahead and do something crazy and in reality we need to stay on the process don't end the process but stay focused on how God wants us to be so verse 18 and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Look at the fact that, that look at the things that he used to try to get. And you, you know, that's what I'm talking about the complexity of life, because most of us we deal with cares of this world. Those cares deal with financial situations, those cares deal with uh 
people that we love and what they're going through. Those cares deal with the things that we think is more important. Some of us cares of our, our images and so forth that we, 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 we allow that to choke the word of God. And, and then don't forget the other thing, deceitful of riches. Some of us say, well, if I only had X amount of money, everything would be all right. If I only had $10 million. I mean, I'm sitting there and you ask your question of those people who have, you know they have this money, but they got challenges. I mean, we, we look at all the television shows. People got wealth, all power and all that, and they're still not satisfied because the answer won't be in the riches. The answer will only be in Christ. It says here, and also we, we challenge in the, the, the lust of other things, the desire of other things. Some of us get caught up and wrapped up in the desire of the flesh. Some of us get caught up in desire, I mean, wrapped up in the things that other people have. I mean, some people get, they, 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 people got, they look at people's lives and say their lives are perfect and therefore they get a, they, they lust toward having that person's life instead of recognizing that the same pattern, the same blessing that can occur in that person's life can occur in ours. But when I get tripped out there, we want to take something from somebody else opposed to acquiring what belongs to us. And don't think that you don't deserve to have riches. Don't think you don't deserve to have a, 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 a great family or blessed family or great life and a prosperous life. You do. We all do. Yes, and it's going to come with a cost that comes with it. But the bottom line is that those things, whether we get riches, whether we get other things, we don't let those things have us. We want us to have Christ. Allow Christ to be our foundation. Let Christ be our motivation. It can't be stuff. Because look how easy you can be cut off and turned off and turned around because you focus on stuff. Come on now. Don't let stuff throw you off. And he said in verse 20, And these are they which are sown on good ground. Meaning, it got into your heart. Not a hardened heart. Not a heart filled with, with choke with, with, with things of this world. But sown on good ground, such so as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30 fold, some 60, some 100. That's what we want to get to. And that's what we want those nuggets to go into. We want the nuggets to fall on good ground. We want the nugget to fall on things that doesn't have. That, that, that all the thorns and the tissels and, 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 and all the things that try to choke that word is, is, has been moved out of the way. And, and, and now the word can be planted into your heart. And in your heart, those things that choke the word is moved out of your heart. So that you can allow the word of God to grow. I thank you for taking this time to listen. Uh, to this video and I, I know you're going to enjoy the nuggets that we're going to be continually sending out uh, and I know you're going to enjoy the Bible studies that we have and you're welcome to join our Bible studies. Um, uh, we try to do a lot of cases put up on this video where you can dial in because we, we try to turn the uh, uh, video conference on so you can dial in if you didn't know that you can. Uh, you can call in audio if you want. Uh, but you're welcome to call in and, and participate in our Bible studies. And then I hope you just enjoy these nuggets. As I get them, I get led. And, and as some of the other members uh, get led with a Christian nugget, I'm going to take those nuggets. I'm going to put them out there for you to hear. Amen? So next time, uh, we'll see you. I'll try to make it consistent. I'll try to make a Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays for the Bible studies. And, and I'll try to make the nuggets come out as often and consistent as possible as well. You be blessed and have a good day. Amen.